and I'm Granny. <laughs> For someone who's on a budget, what's a good gift they could give to family? Make them something. You'd be surprised. Like to take your uh, cookie mixes and stuff and put them in a jar and make them with the bow and stuff like a candy. I do our, I do our neighbors like that that make bows for because he's got a few that really appreciates him and gives him nice gifts Christmas. And I always fix him, him up some kind of little thing to take to him. But one year we got, Cindy made him a wreath for the door. Tennessee, they're a big Tennessee fan. Made her a pair of Tennessee flip flops, but we made them in the summer and just give them to her. But usually I fix them a candy, put it in a bowl or a can. Send them candy and stuff like that. It tickles them. That's why I get the other Most babe. people, they don't bake and cook and make fudge. Cause a lot of people don't make fudge. And just mix up a little thing of different varieties and, and send it. And that's, people appreciate stuff like that. Yeah, so you guys, what kind of fudge do you usually make at Christmas time? Uh, Peanut butter is my favorite. Make peanut chocolate butter, chocolate, chocolate with walnuts. Peanut butter balls. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That's our main. We make about four or five batches of those. Is it peanut butter fudge dipped in chocolate or? It's peanut butter balls dipped in chocolate. You keep making that for your mama. So how many do you think are in each batch? Gosh, I did quite a few out. About 30. 30 in, in a batch? batch? No, we've done like 50 some in each batch. Well, we make them little really small. So you make it several hundred. It depends on who's growing them. Sometimes I get Anna to help me. She'll get a big and then a little one. And... <laughs> so you make several hundred though then? Yeah. And then what? Our last minute cookies our peanut butter cookies with the kisses on them. And we just make those at the last minute so they'll be fresh. He said he'd take them out there under the earring to them for me. Well, I opened the door and it looks like someone's jumping at me because the night guy was sitting there. Those are scrubby like when you got your makeup and stuff on scrubby face. Mm. And you, we've got these things. And if you want to, your jar, don't they? no, that's a, that's a bun, a messy bun. Oh. Nikki kept her hair on top of her head all the time. She made her some messy buns to put on top. <laughs> <laughs> and those and are, these are the best things ever was. I love them. You put them over your pot lid. Mm -hmm. Or a pot holder. Nick was down Sonic every other day. And I love these. These are the perfect kinds of Christmas gifts. And I got plenty of them. You, you want to sell them? Those for, we made them for this class, but we give Debbie two for Christmas. And Debbie loves them for wash She said her it and, takes dry skin off quicker than anything. Her <laughs> and Kevin. So we had to make them some. So. I had to make your daddy a camouflage. And just stuff that we've got in here in our boxes, and we've got boxes and boxes of everything. That ain't the start. Now, Cindy's just got through doing these. We've got a set of them. We got four. Those that Cindy used them all. Kleenex holders. We used them when we were sick. Yeah. Kleenex holders. There's Tennessee. Those are the Tennessee ones. Yeah. What do you think about Dollar Tree no longer being just a dollar? The only one I have run into is the Elizabeth. The Patty has not done theirs or any of the others so far. Are you for this or against it? I'm against it. 
They say it's better stuff, but now you can't just go in. Head. Now you just can't go in and pick up whatever you want, you know. No, they they did have some pretty Christmas stuff, but all the Christmas stuff was five dollars, and their washing powders and stuff like that we've been buying was three dollars. But we well, if I don't pay five dollars for something at a Dollar Tree. I'm gonna go to Walmart or Dollar General. If I'm going to the Dollar Tree, I'm gonna pay a dollar. Or it can sit there. Thanks, Cindy here, and this is the projects I've been working on. Now Mama, the one that makes the cakes, she does that fancy calligraphy writing. And she wrote on the top, our names, I have Thomas Dunn, I have Anna Dunn, and I have Mama Dunn, and I was working on me when I took, got COVID, so I haven't got me finished yet, but I'll be able to get me finished pretty soon. But you just embroider it and you fill it in. Make it look real fancy and pretty. Sorry, what's the oldest quilt? It's called a crazy quilt. And that's where people just took those scrap clothes that their kids had outgrown or didn't need anymore and they just cut them out in every direction. There's no pattern to it at all. And you know, whenever we quilt, we fold it under and do it that way. Well, Crazy Quilt, they do it on top. I mean, it's just sewed every direction. But it was brought up like in the 1700s, something like that. And then the next one they come up with was a yo-yo, which come out in the 1920s, but it got real popular in the 1930s because cotton and stuff was hard to come by. So they come up with the yo-yo quilt. Because you don't have to have cotton and binding or any of that. You can just use it straight out. So you're making a pattern in your head? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm making a pattern in my head. The centerpiece will be a cross. And uh, then under the cross, I'm going to put gray. I've got some gray yo-yos made. And, uh, so there's a yo-yo. That's a light color. But anyhow, I will, um, How many yo-yos do you think it's going to take? Look at those two bags. To make a regular big size quilt, it's going to take about 2,500 or more. But the end of the cross will be right here. So, 2,500. Yeah. So under here, somewhere in this, this is my dark colored yo-yos. But I've got some yo-yos that kind of look like rock. So I'm going to have the cross on like so on rocks down and then just do different colors around it. And up here on the top, the cross is gonna be in the center, which is gonna take some more colors around and I'm gonna stop them off. And then the tops are gonna to be around and I gotta come down and fill in and then I'll put it on my bed to find the center. And then I'm just gonna work around it and make up a pattern, so I'm gonna do it. And then I'll probably put it on a piece of material and tack it. Now you don't have to do that, you can just leave it like it is, but I'll probably do that. Mm -hmm. And besides, you can, if you flip it over, you can see the back part of your work, and I don't like that part. So I want. I would get the. Uh, the old domestic. That's what I'm going to get. So. 
Are you working on any quilts for gifts this year? No. You did that last year. How many quilts did you give away as gifts last year? I just done Nathan and Jeremy one last year, didn't I? I done two for gifts last year. Done three the year before, and two the year before that. And then Lexi's confiscated three. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this is going to be a pretty one. We can't wait to see when it's finished. Hooks right here. You want to line this yellow part up with it, and it'll snap. You see? Snap in. See? But, but you sewed through those holes? Uh -huh. So how do you, well, if you're sewing around it, are you sewing around it? No, we're sewing it in it. So just in it and back out the same hole? So you're not ever coming around this. No, if you do, you can't take it. That's what I was wondering. And y'all are the crew just supervising over here? I guess we're taking lessons because she bought me one to do. <laughs> <laughs> so then you just take, you double your thread and your needle. Your knot in it, and you fold this under, and you start out with going and under it, and then you come back out on the other side of the same hole. Gotcha. Like that, and you go all the way around it. Ever since I feel having sex, I know. Twenty years to get her quilt made. And I've done that many in less than two weeks. That's the Yep, and every time we call you, you're yo yoing. Well, I ain't got nothing else to do. I get up around 5.30 or 6 o'clock and get my housework done and decide what I'm going to fix for supper. And then I get in my, make me a nest and I sit down and I yo yo and I set my phone, my alarm to five minutes till two so I don't forget to go get Will. And then I go to Lisbethan and get Will, and I sit in the car and yo-yo till he gets in the car, and we go home. Well, I get up and go pee and go back to bed. And <laughs> get up and go pee and go back to bed. And then I get up and jump start my lungs, and I by the time I get back I holler. it's uh, time to start supper. Supper. And then I clean up the kitchen. And then I make me another nest. And then it turns on the westerns. And we watch gun smoke. And I yo yo till 10 o'clock. And then I watch the news. And then I go to bed. And then I yo yo again the next day. Well, it depends on what's on TV. Monday night we watch. Dancing with the stars and record the voice and then go back and watch the voice. <laughs> Tuesday night, we watch the voice and then there's nothing else. So I watch JP the B Man on YouTube, collecting all these honeybees, and it is very, very educational. Wednesday night, we got The Mass Singer and Married at First Sight. Uh, Thursday night. No. Well, there's this new little 30 minute show come on. It's a comedy about ghosts. Uh, it's pretty cute. <coughs> Friday night, unless this. Now that football's over with, nothing. Well, I know what you watch on Friday night. Well, we always watch YouTube. Gotta Every watch Granny night, Women. We watch YouTube. Every Friday night at 7 p.m. We watch Granny Women. That's well, right. I come out of the grocery store the other day and this man come up through there. He had a beautiful truck. A new truck. He said, you're that lady that's on that cooking show? He said, my wife's a sitting over there in the truck. He said, she won't miss you on a Friday night. She watches it every Friday night. Well, I went back in there yesterday or the day before. He 
said, my wife was what was talked to you. <laughs> I mean, not the car I looked like. I don't know what. <laughs> you stick yourself hundreds no of times. Uh, you knew that Carson Peters that went on the horse. Yeah, he goes with that. He's walking the hallways. We uh, see him every day. Well, they have to take somebody back this week, and I'm just wondering if they can bring him back. It is. Right here where I started, I comes in. So I'm gonna bring it right back through. And then I'm gonna pop it off. Mm -hmm. And see where it's all the way around. And then I'm just gonna take it off the thing. <coughs> It don't matter whether they take him or not, because he's already been to the Grand Ole Opera and everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he's already got his name established. Well, he's ever in middle school, just about. And then I'm going <coughs> to tie it off. That's all for me to do, holding a needle. I don't know how you tie a knot. I can't tie a knot. I just send it to it. Huh? Tie a knot. My fingers are just in there. I can't tie a knot. I tie my knot. And then I'm going to run it right back through the back. I ain't even know what. Probably because the back door's open. I'm tied off. Clip it off. There's your yo-yo. So all of them's finished out. You just pop your lid off. And you just pull your material off. See how it's folded in? Instead of you having to go around it, it's already cut around. And take the end of your thread and you just pull it. And then you just pull your ends out and you tack it and run it back through the back and you got your yo-yo. First time. Huh? What'd you say, say? <laughs> say. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like us and subscribe. And hit that bell icon.